Kupuswami Shastri Research Institute. I welcome all of you for this uh, lecture through webinar by one of the greatest archaeologists of the present era in India, Dr. T. Satyamurti. We are indeed thankful to you, sir, for really agreeing to deliver this lecture under Saraswati Sundaram, Sundaram Saraswati Endowment. And all of us are aware of the contribution of Professor C.S. Sundaram. He was associated with our research institute right from its inception in the year 1944-45 and till his demise he was closely associated with our research institute he was one of the foremost students of professor v raghavan and his phd thesis was on the contribution of tamil nadu to sanskrit which was subsequently published he joined the Department of Sanskrit in Madras University and became the professor there. He was such a soft spoke person and equally knowledgeable in the field of literature, epigraphy, uh, philosophy, religion, and many branches, especially in the field of cataloging was one of the rare scholars that we had amidst us till some years ago. And on the fateful day, he was at the Kupuswami Shastri Research Institute when he felt some sort of discomfort and he was uh, taken to his house accompanied by our two staffs. And then he was rushed to the hospital and he passed away. So he was very closely associated with our research institute till his demise. He was also the chairman of Madras Sanskrit College. And he has encouraged so many young scholars, not only in Sanskrit, but also in music department, Madras University. And I'm sure Dr. T. Satyamurti knew him personally so well. And uh, Dr. Sundaram's donations in the form of books to our research institute also comprises of a vast set of books on Indian epigraphy. So it is very apt that Dr. T. Satyamurti has um, agreed to talk to us today and we are indeed thankful to him again. An internationally acclaimed scholar and expert in the field of archaeology. Professor Satyamurti was born in the year 1946 in Chidambaram. His father was a freedom fighter. We should be proud of it. And he inculcated all the great values and the Swadeshi concept of Swadeshi in C.T. Satyamurti and later he had undergone the complete Vedic training under the traditional Vedic scholar Chidambaram Latesa Sastrigal. He has done the Adhyayana on Ajur Veda under his master. Later on, he did this um, graduation in physics from Annamalai University and then MA Sanskrit at the Annamalai University and the PhD also there under Dr. C.S. Venkateshwaran who was the student or the last set of students of Mahamahubadhyaya Kupuswami Shastri himself and Dr. T. Satyamurti's PhD thesis was on Dharma Shastra. After that, he exhibited his skill by obtaining the first rank in the Institute of Archaeology in New Delhi and he was trained by two great stalwarts. One was of course, Padma Bhushan, Dr. Shivarama Murthy, and the other was Dr. K. B. Soundar Rajan. And 
He had done monumental work in the field of archaeology, and we cannot list everything here. He has reorganized the museums uh, in the Archaeological Survey of uh, India in many places, like Red Fort, Kajuraho, Halabedu, Purana Kila, Padmanabhavaram in Kerala. So he has been traveling throughout India, north, east, west, south, because he has held very high positions in Bhuvneshwar, Vadodara, Chennai, Trishur. So we can see that from Delhi, then in Gujarat, in Orissa, in down south in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, he has uh, contributed a lot. And in the field of excavations, his contribution is really mind blogging. It was um, a very um, wonderful achievement that he participated in the archaeological excavation at the Krishna Janmasthanam of Mathura. And also he was connected with the Ayodhya and the Purana Kila in New Delhi and in Tamil Nadu, Adi Chanalur. Everybody is aware of it. His contribution is immense. And also in Mahabalipuram. And one of the greatest achievements of Dr. T. Satyamurti is that he discovered a Murugan temple of pre Pallavan era, which is an important contribution. And he has done monumental work in excavating or bringing to light some of the uh, documents of the Chola murals from the dark chambers of the big temple in Tanjavur. And he is also a prolific writer. He has written many books and more than 60 research articles. And his book on Chidambaram Nataraja temple is praiseworthy and it is very popular among scholars. And he has traveled widely in India and abroad. He was much sought after in Sri Lanka and many other places. And even after his retirement, he started the Rich Foundation and has been the guiding force. And he is the person behind in uh, renovating many of the dilapidated temples, which he described to us in many places in Vivekananda College, Chennai, and also in many places. And he has been closely associated with the Kuppu Swami Shastri Research Institute. Because of him, many of our scholars have been participating in many seminars in Tamil Nadu and outside Tamil Nadu also. And Dr. Satyamurti was honored by the Samskrita Academy two years ago during the 90th anniversary celebrations of the Samskrita Academy. And we are indeed grateful to Professor Satyamurti for agreeing to give this lecture on Indian epigraphy. He is going to talk about it for the benefit of all of us. Generally, many people consider this subject to be very boring, but I'm sure Dr. T. Satyamurti with his vast theoretical and practical experience in this field would enthrall all of us. And once again, I thank Dr. Satyamurti for joining us today. And I welcome all of you for this uh, webinar lecture by Dr. T. Satyamurti under the endowment in memory of Dr. C. S. Sundaram, another great Sanskrit scholar. Welcome to all of you. And now I request Dr. T. Satyamurti to take over. Over to Professor Satyamurti. Namaskar. It is a um, very one of the very happiest uh, moment for me in my life because you know, two things are there. Uh, when I was in uh, in Nama University, that is uh, our class used to be under uh, 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 the photographs. Of course, they used to be big uh, portrait of three. So we used to have our education only there only. So. It was a very good, happy occasion. So we used to think who's this man? And we were students now. Then our professor used to tell much about him because he was his student also. And so Kupi Swami Sastri is uh, such a great man. And also that we know very well, actually, we all know very well. So in this institute, which uh, is giving a lecture, is a great uh, opportunity and also a great blessing 
of him and the professor C.S. Vedasana also. Now, that is um, coming to this thing that is uh, when I was asked to uh, give the lecture, I thought that is um, uh, it would be more appropriate that is um, to give it in the in, 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 in central hall because my main talk that is today happens to be surrounding the Mahapariva only. That is because uh, that is how my experience, I am not going to say you something new, but I am only sharing my experiences which I had with him, that is in connection with archaeology, especially his, his epigraphy. But I am very thankful to Balasubramaniya for giving uh, this such a kind of great uh, introduction. Very well, this exaggerated in you uh, know in the epigraphy itself the first part of this um, will praise the king that is uh, you know very well the, how the king's victory should be that is uh, elaborately told and he has his one price so like that i take that like that only is supermanian that is all the, uh, that is all the, um, the things which he has which he said even though i don't deserve it that not that much but anyways i did some work in advisor and the first instance, I am thankful to uh, to you all, especially with this uh, executive committee of this uh, KL um, Institute, and also especially to make um, uh, this uh, Suri, who has uh, made me to come and uh, talk here. Of course, as I told you, if it is the central hall, I would have been more happy because the talk is on on only. But anyway, now uh, I don't want to take much time, but I want to say. Something about the epigraphies, which is uh, the methodologies, uh, which it's uh, taught to us. That is, uh, you know, it all happened about 50 years back, if you say correctly, exactly in 1970. Since October, I joined the Archives of India. I don't know how it so matches. It is exactly 50 years back. That is, uh, I joined the Temple Survey Project, that is, of uh, the Archaeological Center of India, under his Sarkar. Was, uh, was being the survey of uh, Kerala temples. So that is, um, as soon as I joined there, that is, uh, yeah, people from, um, yeah, so many people approached us, but it was Sarkar who referred me to see a Sundaram. And see a Sundaram, it's a great scholar, you go and learn some things uh, regarding the um, things you come directly from the university. So epigraphy you should learn. So Sundaram was so kind man, said, uh, that is uh, a man of humor. This will, he will uh, frequently have so many patimandals. It's about so many subjects. It's very interesting because uh, as I, said, I was a student, I just used to just look at his mouth only and see that his face only and see how he speaks so much about the epigraphy. And his, his knowledge was so much and also he, he taught me so much about it. How to prepare the index itself, I was not going. It's index, a topographical list which he prepared so many. This is uh, in the uh, uh, volumes. And also, he helped with the archives of India in that respect. So, Sarkar was very, having a very, 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 what we call is a very soft corner, or having a very high regard for C.S. Sundra. So, I'm very happy to associate uh, in the lectures uh, which is made in memory of him. And I think uh, that is, uh, uh, his contributions will never be remembered that is, uh, from our, by archaeologists of India, archaeologists, and epigraphists. So now I come to this main um, point regarding. Shall I share the screen? Share. 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 Uh, so now, what happened? That is, um, uh, when I joined, that is immediately. That is, uh, the challenge was to, I, as I told you, that is um, uh, uh, to know about epigraphy first, and then um, go ahead because uh, the Kerala um, the temples were surveyed by him. It was having more Tamil epigraphy only, because Kerala is having um, uh, more than about 3,500 uh, um, uh, epigraphs. But uh, all the inscriptions, most of them, up to 3,000, they are all uh, what you call it, so only in uh, what you call it, Tamil, and only about 500 or Malayalam, late Malayalam. So that is Tamil was the ruling language for a long time, it's there in uh, Kerala. Up to even 18th century, 19th century also, all the documents used to be written only in uh, Tamil. So that is, uh, he asked me to go and find out, but Sundaram directed me, Sundaram directed me to go to this um, uh, uh, epigraphy branch. Of course, at that time, 
that is, uh, we are trimming with the epigraphic branch for learning more. So I was attached to this, uh, the great, this uh, Dr. Sanganarayana. And Sanganarayana was in charge of um, Tamil epigraphy, I mean, uh, Javelin epigraphy at that time. He is, um, asked me to first take up uh, that is, uh, the inscriptions, which Mahapariva wanted to, that is, uh, decipher. It was already known, but it was not completely analyzed. So he wanted to take the epigraphy uh, full copy and uh, make it, uh, that is, again, study it and take it to him. So the, this the entire uh, the lecture which I am uh, going to say today is uh, dedicated to him. It's not only uh, because of his uh, great questions, the saint, but also he was so kind to all the uh, type of people. So many scholars and historians who are much to this uh, research methodology. He taught each and every one in his own way. So, uh, now, he used to... Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you keep the mic still closer, sir? Because your voice is feeble. Uh, could you hear it now? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. I think it's better. Very good. Uh, could you hear it now? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Better. So, uh, he used to frequently quote from uh, the inscription, um, from Harigara Bukka's inscription. Sir. That is, um, the first um, the grant made by Harigara Bukka ended like this Dana Palayor Dharamadje. Dhanath Sayo Palanam. Dhanath is Sargam of Nodi, Palanath Achyudam Param. This is the sloka, maybe may come in some of the Dhamma Sastras. But anyway, this was quoted by, that is in the inscriptions of the um, Harigara Bukka, in, in, in many more scriptures later by the general uh, king. So it says this, uh, as you know very well, the Britons giving a gift and the maintenance of the existing gift, that is more meritorious. Like the former only one attains heaven, and the latter one attains the lotus feet of Lord Himself. That is, Lord Himself can this frequently that is, that is, it is very, very much interesting or uh, a job for archaeologists because uh, you know, you by uh, protecting or preserving all these things, uh, they are all going to attain uh, the, the great thing of Achyudam Padana. That is, it's not uh, merely uh, uh, keeping or giving more new presents. But keeping the old things, especially it is, uh, including inscriptions, because inscriptions are so great subject for us. Uh, that is, it gives so many information, uh, inscriptions, and also art and archaeological materials. Uh, it is more meritorious, especially the temples, preserving the old temples. It's more meritorious than creating this uh, new temple. That was his uh, motto. So now this he directly is involved. That is, uh, that is, he made this government uh, of India to take up this Angkor Wat project, that is, uh, which was um, the, the temples in Angkor Wat, in Cambodia, were all in uh, completely in ruins. So when the, the challenge came of preserving it, so many himself wanted that India should also have a, that is a contribution there, because it was one of the biggest temples, Vishnu temples, so far known in the world. That is, so he wanted to contribute, so that he sent our team there, and um, uh, Team there, and that's of course um, through government of India, as of India, one of my senior colleagues uh, at the Vasilia Bank, and also um, uh, start of the doing conservative works. Of course, even now it is going on, even after uh, between 20 years, because uh, the um, uh, <coughs> destruction was so much, because the temple complex was so big, not only this temple, so many temples are there within the what you call uh, uh, the city itself and outside also. So, this thing is. Uh, is there. He has shown keen interest in this subject. Sir, request from audience that your uh, sir, request from the audience is that your uh, voice is very feeble. The audio is not very clear. Could you could you hear me? Uh, no? when you speak loud, it is clear, sir. Yeah, I'm <coughs> okay. Fine. So now coming to this um, uh, preamble, that is uh, what I'm going to say if at all time permits, I will go through all the subjects, but I will confine myself to the time given to me. That is so, that is a thing. So now, so this, um, uh, the significance of these um, <coughs> inscriptions, uh, they are all government documents, that is uh, considered as a government documents by many. Of course, I will come to the date later. The cultural background they reflect, that is, and also, which are the important things there, how you have to read it. That is, um, it may give something, but it may have implied meaning. These things you have to bring it out like a poetry. 
the development of language that is uh, language you know that is a topic we used to tell frequently that is even in the uh, textbooks or copied books or anything uh, that is which you have manuscripts there is a possibility of uh, some change because uh, the writer or copier can commit some mistake but it is it cannot happen in case of um, epigraphy because uh, the particular periods it is already is uh, done and, and it is called it is uh, saved there so it is a uh, particular period it is uh, yeah. so tool for understanding not in architecture it helps us in many cases to the uh, uh, correctly uh, interpret and understand um, art and architecture and the photography is um, also it helps us to understand some of the, um, the problems which you could not understand that is directly by simple text and instrument spots conflict in pulse these are some of the things which i want to cover if possible i will go address it within the time i can find so the <coughs> epigraphy is this uh, it is having as uh, implied connotations that is um, what we call uh, that is uh, this gives us kind of numerous information on arrangement in india not the historical records people don't think that is most of the things people uh, think are conclude that uh, it contains only the historical facts about the king's victory or king's defeat or his achievements or something like that. it's not like that it is having such uh, something you can read between the lines these are all not my saying because uh, mahapuri used to say frequently that is each and every word connotates something that is uh, which we are not going now so very from they have not only historical facts they had cultural life they have economic growth social setup and community network architect engineering skills especially engineering skills so much in the uh, in the inscriptions itself some small things which they may say karpani sai bit they have converted the uh, brick temple into stone temple but if some uh, how they made it even if you make it if you go and excavate that and find the temples how they without changing this foundations how they made it it is an wonder that is its engineering skill of the ancient stupadis the language is very important because it it is a course that documents the language of a particular period and commerce and, and applied science of course mathematical accuracy it is very important for uh, having a mathematics if you give a text for a, <coughs> a man or a stupadi or a copper that is recorded on a particular uh, copper plate or uh, that is uh, it or uh, uh, in the temple you just just calculate this area which he wants here and accordingly is just to reduce the size font of the letter and these are some of the things uh, which you got to appreciate because in the entire temple if you go to tanjavur you can see so many inscriptions but uh, with, with so much of uh, materials in them for us to understand but how that is uh, uh, mathematical accuracy was there by the um, uh, man who called it that is of course if he uh, if he is not completing the inscriptions it is incomplete we cannot get any uh, departmental information so for us um, epigraphs of the modern days are concerned that is we come it is it, is, it was considered as a government document it is important when the foreigners um, the foreign rulers came here for ruling they found it a uh, system by which all these people were obeying all people were more systematic more disciplined and the injections uh, that they without any anybody enforcing it they were just uh, they are giving the share to the king and they gave the ship to the temples of dharma or anything but how it was possible say that uh, by having any force on them that is completely they are doing it for thousands of years so they found that is um, this uh, the inscriptions uh, uh, directly have a bearing on the local people that is uh, they have considered it as a, as a great record of of this uh, dharma itself so they strictly followed it initially considered this as a model to frame the ruling is um, britishers consider this, this this model is better because this by this we can rule the people but unfortunately uh, later some people who uh, how started uh, that is misinterpreting it that is uh, uh, we cannot go to that problem now but just that but uh, earlier they, they they appreciated it that is how this uh, thing and the, if the king says this lands belong to particular uh, the temple or particular man or particular communities that is uh, it was with them so without any interruptions of course there were some local problems that was different but it's not um, uh, uh, that much a great problem for the king to control and the new details given in them it is very important that is uh, especially for the british government 
to have a way with, with, uh, from the Rajaraja stamp. The revenue details, even now, that is, um, you can uh, demarcate them. That is another problem for the people who are intending to sell the dog on these uh, temple properties. Because even now, you can find out that is, um, they are uh, located the uh, uh, lands because they have given such a kind of um, uh, uh, dog. They can, uh, the boundaries have been earmarked and so we have given. So now, so after a long time, so they wanted the help of the, the local people also. So they thought it is better. That is, uh, we, have, uh, we appoint some uh, uh, great scholar the local. So first they, uh, they appointed this um, uh, Venkaya, this um, <coughs> Venkaya, um, uh, as the chief epigraphist. He was the first chief epigraphist to be, uh, that is in the, uh, that was a great post because Whenever the chief epigraphist um, was visiting, that is, uh, it was a district collector who was to go and receive him and uh, take make arrangements. That was the protocol that is, which they uh, um, uh, kept during that period as far as chief epigraphist there. And also, they were particular that all the inscriptions discovered should be published only with the approval of uh, that is chief epigraphist. After since it is a government uh, document, they gave that level to. Um, and importance to see photographs. So um, uh, unlike now, that is why whenever you find you, you can publish anything that is without any authority, that is without anybody checking it. It was not like that. It was chief photographers who was to that is um, certify that is this can be published. So then only they can uh, get it published. So that is um, uh, that was the authority who uh, uh, he became an authority. Of course. Um, uh, um, now it's easy, but he was the uh, authority for a long time. Uh, he was the Rai Bhagavad Venkaya. This is the uh, title given by him because his great um, contributions um, to this um, Indian epigraphy. Uh, now we will come to this, uh, today's topic. This, um, as he was going. Uh, um, I was telling you, it is Mysore officer, Sagar Narayana, and uh, he has um, asked me to take a training under B.S. Raman, B.S. Sita Raman, and uh, C.S. Srinivasan. We were uh, editing these inscriptions from this uh, old temple. When Mahaprabhu visited this temple in the 1930s, 40s, again 1960s, 70s, the temple was completely in a dilapidated condition. But he learned from this uh, earlier publications. And also, see one of the articles um, the, uh, of the Nilakanda Sastri has mentioned about this uh, temple in Nanayana, that is, uh, which is having uh, uh, great descriptions of, of the Vedic University which existed there. Yes. Well, this was completely in dilapidated conditions. That is, uh, um, of course, when I went there, even in 1970s, you can't enter the temple, it was completely um, uh, thorns and bushes were there. Very really difficult for us to. Um, um, was there and taking, um, um, of course, sustained by just once the work was over, uh, Sunapur himself requested the government to take it over. This now it became a monument. You can see that is full of inscriptions, full of inscriptions. This generally is a, a grants subscribed of Sunapur himself could read it whenever he went in. He was very much interested to know the sakas which were taught there, Vedic sakas, and Sanskrit uh, literature which were taught there. So now you can see on the corner. So it is there like that. So <laughs> it is uh, known as Aragya Narsimha Paramal uh, Temple in Nayana. Of course, um, uh, the inscriptions are there are uh, totally about um, 14 inscriptions of Chola period, the four Vijayanagara period, and some of the main inscriptions were, are also there. It is uh, known as Ennayi uh, Ramana Raja Raja Chadur Vedi Mangalam. That is the thing I think. It is um, uh, uh, Rajendra one during his reign, 1012 to 1044. Of course, um, uh, uh, Mahabir was interested because it was exactly about 1000 years back. Of course, uh, when he said it was 920 years back, no, just 1000 years back. It was a period uh, which was this Lord was having a uh, religious uh, momentum that is uh, iterations. So, um, so um, what are the endowments which are given to this uh, temple? That is um, that is very important. 
one valley of land and four marks in Raja Raja Chaturvedi Mangalam for the expenditure for worship of worship of food offerings to the main god and the recitation of Tirvai uh, Mari by four persons. Uh, this is this point I will come to detail later. So Tirvai Mari is persons also got an uh, endowment there who are chanting Tirvai Mari. And then again, one valley and four more uh, form of land for food offerings to 23 Vaishnavas who were staying in the madam nearby. So it was attached to this temple. The students' endowments are three and four very interesting because uh, three is the sacrifice of land of valley and two mom for the expenses in connection with the Ani Anusham festival. That is also Anusham was a very Anuradha uh, Chitram. Anusham was a very important festival that is uh, uh, in this temple. That is the reason why Mahaprabhu was born in Anusham Chitram already because uh, the Vishnu has brought him. That is again to rejuvenate uh, the so now purchase of um, again another uh, purchases four valley of um, particular valley of land in this um, uh, Mabar Cherry that is maybe a present uh, what you call this male uh, cherry. That is a Mambaka Cheri. It's Mambaka Cheri in, in the Tamil language. Tamil language. Maybe in Nalacheri. About 45 daily of lands, that is um, land, for food offerings to God. Viti uh, Runda. Viti Runda here means only is, uh, because generally, that is the iconography, we um, uh, uh, have this Narsimha only in seated position. So Viti Runda, Narsimha. And for pilgrims, that is. Um, a remuneration of teachers and students, that is very important. The main uh, 45 valley of lands means about 222 acres of land. That is in that uh, entire uh, wetland, it is completely mentioned this wetland. It was uh, the purchase. It is a very important aspect of uh, these inscriptions. And in many inscriptions also, the kings never uh, directly gives, uh, gave that is charities that is either the, uh, to the Brahmins or for Sanskrit University or any other purposes uh, yeah, directly uh, uh, from <coughs> taking it from somebody. The people are not are all talking about this, uh, that is squeezed it from somebody and gave to somebody. It was not like that. That is, they purchased the land, that is, paid the for, for it, and then attached to this university. That is the great thing which you should understand, even in the earlier Kokan uh, inscription or so, which we will see later. Then also the purchase of the land. So almost all they purchased the land and gave for charity. And also that is the, in some other cases, um, uh, in this case we don't give a specific mention. In some other cases, we have got this, um, uh, this tax exemption. Tax exemption is one way given. That is people, the uh, uh, modern uh, they say, oh, all the lands have been exempted for tax. That was the reason why the kingdoms of it was, it was not like that. If you take this um, 45 acres of uh, land or 45 uh, valley of land, this <coughs> village may be having about uh, about 2,000 or 3,000 valley of land. It is only about uh, 20% or 10%, not even 10%. In most of the cases, less than 5% were used for the charities. The less were, less, that were used to be only by the uh, common people. That is the thing. The purchase of 45 valley of uh, land for remuneration to the teachers. Now we'll come to the main subject, which uh, Mahaprabhu was very much interested. Um, uh, the, um, uh, the subjects taught were this Rigveda, of course, uh, general Yajurveda, and uh, Chandogya Samaveda, <coughs> Samaveda, and um, Talavatara Samaveda, and Vajasinaya, that is um, uh, Sukla Yajurveda, part of Sukla Yajurveda, and uh, Bauda Yika, so, the Grikeshu and Kalpa and Kadak Sutras, and then Atharaveda. This is the, the general subjects which are taught on the Vedic subject. On the language, they started uh, <coughs> Rupa Vatara, that is also Vyakrana, it's also a grammar work, and it's uh, Vyakrana, and Puru Bhimamsa of uh, Prabhakara, there are many two schools, main schools, in this Puru Bhimamsa, and Vedanta, that is Uttara Bhimamsa, mm -hmm. and totally they have uh, 34, uh, 34 uh, 340 students, and um, uh, including 270 Brahmacharis, they were juniors, and 70 chapters, they were all later. So now, this Mahaprabhu, when we read it, we told that it's a preparatory chart 
that is the, the showing. Of course, uh, some attempt was made, Lady Vedanga was submitted, but at that time the inscription was not fully available to him. That was the reason he could not publish it. Now we could see that is how many that is um, um, relationship between the uh, ratio between the students to the teachers. This uh, Rigveda 75 uh, students are there and three teachers, and Rigveda 75 students and 18 teachers. And Chaudhava Sama has 20 students and one teacher. And Talavagar Sama Vedam, that is 20 and one teacher. And what is the Sukhlejir Veda? Again, 20 students and one teacher. And for this um, uh, sutras, and um, uh, you are getting uh, 10 students and also um, uh, one teacher. And other Vedas, uh, they are 10 and 1. Of course, uh, each and every thing has you know, the read between the lines because. In earlier occasions, uh, early inscriptions, which we just um, um, uh, studied later because of uh, Maratanga. That is, some of the circles which were mentioned, mentioned there, so Mr. Chandra Sama so, um, was not there in the earlier the period here. So it was brought. So when the king came here, that is, after victory from uh, Eastern India or Northern India, he not only brought this uh, this, uh, other uh, heritage like um, the art and architecture, he brought this educational system also, which we were here. We are all brought this piece of Rupavatara, which was Rupavataras. And so of course, it, uh, uh, Yakyana was uh, differently. There are 20 students were there and one teacher. And this Purva also, that is um, 30 students were there, but one teacher because it can it contains more, uh, uh, they are all adults uh, uh, stage because after learning Vedas only, they can. Uh, directly go for uh, for the norms or for performing agnas or anything. So that was CC, so they kept probably one teacher. But Vedanta, that is uh, about uh, uh, 10 students only, I did not mention here, but 10 students only, but one teacher. And totally three, five, 350 students um, were there, or 15 teachers. This was a um, chart prepared by them, so by the average, that is about uh, 20 base students. Um, yeah, one teacher was the um, uh, scale kept. Uh, in that time, that is even applicable now. That is even in modern India also. We want uh, 20 way teachers, not more than 20 way students should be there in the class. That was there is uh, about thousand years back. That is uh, in your opinion. Explain though. Now <coughs> allowances which were given for the um, um, students. Students were given allowances for their maintenance. It used they used to give it to the, uh, the general body or whoever is maintaining it. So uh, six story of party per day and half cost per day. This was given to these people, like Veda, Ajiveda, Chandra Jans, and Rajasriya, and uh, all these people, other Vedas, Vipavatara, they all got it, uh, that is uh, Veda. So they all uh, got it. So um, uh, an average of six nori of paddy and uh, that is um, six costs only. But Yakarana and Spurgamansa, that is uh, Yakarana students were kept uh, that is, uh, in a higher position to always. They got some, uh, what he calls, uh, half courage of gold, eh? but not uh, monthly or uh, yearly, but it was only for chapters. If the eight chapters are over, it's uh, Ashtadhyayi, the eight um, half courage of uh, gold will be given, with the um, usual this, uh, paddy that is, uh, which was given to them. So one kurini is uh, a paddy uh, they used to get it, that is uh, daily, which was shared among them. And then Purvimamsa, it is also on this, uh, it is a little more because the 30 by carriage of gold in total, that is, they don't complete the course, they will uh, uh, get a 30 by carriage. Because um, uh, uh, why it was uh, it was given more for the Purvan um, Yamsa means? Probably uh, uh, he felt it was necessary for them to that is, uh, practice it also. It is not a um, mere chanting of Vedas and learning the uh, language. They have to, that is, um, uh, what you say, they have to practice it also. Unless uh, they practice it directly there, uh, they, they will be a failure if they go outside. So that was the reason why that is the uh, um, the students that given a uh, very good uh, that is um, uh, that one. They also got uh, one kurini and two nori of paddy that is per day. Of course, now you come to the teacher's uh, remuneration. So this uh, this uh, this thought was also prepared uh, because he wanted to know that is. Uh, what was the position of the teachers? 
So, you know, these um, uh, teachers who taught the, the regular things, that is, uh, the chanting of Vedas, including Sri Veda, Veda, or Sama Veda, or even including other Vedas, who are grouped together. That is, um, the payments are made according to this, uh, the, 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 not only the qualifications, but the risk which they have taken to train them. So, uh, probably so they were having less risk, uh, that is, in, in training them. So they got, um, that is, uh, the teachers got um, the half Kalanju of gold and so, uh, two Kurni and four, uh, four Nari of Paddy per day for them to sustain. Because teachers uh, could have got it uh, directly, that is, uh, uh, when the students' uh, share could have been given to a uh, uh, common man who was maintaining the list there. These are his resumptions. Now, um, it was very important so, so Kautama Saka was popular here in work, even till today it's continuing. But other Sakas are um, uh, almost extinct. It's um, uh, Talavakar Saka, that is um, the much difficulty. Um, uh, we got it um, completely documented, that is uh, video audio documented, that is in Sankara University. Of course, uh, the introduction of new subjects show that with the reading of the Eastern India, including Kalinga, that is so many subjects were brought, not only as I told you earlier also. It was not only art, architecture, or uh, they have brought some money or something, not like that, but educated system also, whichever one was not here, yeah, which was rare, which you want, the, 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 the education, education is wanted. Those things, especially you see Rupa Avatara, it was brought here. Now we come to this um, the remuneration of the teachers, um, and uh, Yakana teachers, uh, if you continue it, Yakana teachers were uh, paid high, that is, uh, one college of gold. Per chapter. The eight chapters are over, they will give eight calendar. But one column per day, boy, others are given half column, they will one column of ready per day. That is a very interesting aspect. The Vakarana was kept in a top position. Of course, uh, this uh, chart was prepared to understand only who was in the top because teaching Vakarana may be difficult because uh, the knowledge is also, they want a higher knowledge to uh, teach also. They could have all the uh, Sahitya also, you should know all other um, knowledge also to apply it, that is um, to teach the Vyakana, maybe. So, the Puru Pivans also, as I told you, that is for the students, they gave, that is um, their goal for the, um, uh, the students, um, uh, they gave 36 Kalanju totally for this all of them, they made more practical. Here we find the Puru Pivans also, Prabhakaram was um, in use, that is not the other school was in use. You see, Prabhakar was there. That, is, um, that was, um, uh, he was having 12 Kalanju for 12 chapters. That is one Kalan for Paddy per day. But this, he got this uh, one, uh, one Kalanju, 12 Kalanju in total. Because this may be more. Because probably he also has to conduct the, the practicals to teach them. But the uh, very, very important aspect is this uh, Vedanta. Vedanta. The Vedanta. Then the uh, teachers, the students also could not get any gold. And the teachers also could not get any gold. They have one column, one tuni of paddy only daily. They don't have anything um, uh, that is of gold. No gold for them. Probably when this chart was prepared and showed to uh, Mahapriva, he told that probably the king thought that all the people reading Vedantas and Vedantas, teaching Vedantas will all be sannyasi like me. They don't require any gold. That may be the reason why the king has uh, made it. So, sarcastically, he told like that. But anyway, there is, uh, Vedanta was kept in there. Even the 10 students are there. One teacher was there. It was getting lower and lower. But if somebody is, uh, uh, that is, that may be the reason we don't know. But Yagrana was highly paid. And Vedanta was uh, very, uh, the people from there were local, very, very low paid people. Uh, we, we, we were, the, the, the same status uh, even continues even now, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, new subjects introduced, I told yeah. you earlier also, to the Rupa Avatar of uh, Dharma Kirti and the elementary work of grammar, uh, uh, which uh, may be in Central and even uh, Northern India. So many people claim it's uh, uh, Rupa Avatar's uh, uh, origin, we are the others. But it was um, they introduced here. Of course, um, uh, I, as I told you earlier, so it's, uh, it's very important because um, uh, uh, the um, description is just uh, the, before uh, we, we, we can say um, uh, the Acharya, that is um, uh, Ramanuja, because um, uh, Ramanuja's um, uh, birth was there in, 
10, 15 or uh, whatever you keep it. But it's, um, uh, it's activities as um, the Acharya should have taken one day at the age of 20 or 25. But during that time, maybe a little earlier than uh, um, uh, he, he got this Acharya hood, there is uh, the chanting of Tiruvai Mari is um, in the temples started by the king. This uh, royal support was there. Of course, uh, when this was read in the inscriptions, uh, um, uh, the Mahabharata have felt this may be the earliest reference in inscriptions on Tiruvai Mari. Of course, later, uh, they, of course, uh, uh, in the certain article study showed it was correct. This was the one of the earliest reference about the, the chanting of the Tiruvai Mari in inscriptions. We don't say in the things, in inscriptions for which the grant was uh, um, made by the king. Since the inscription is um, uh, contemporary to uh, Ramanuja, it is uh, Ramanuja Acharya, it is very, very interesting. But there are so many things in the inscriptions which I have not covered because of the time. But anyways, the important aspect is uh, there is one fellow who was granted land for Panchagavyam Talibman. That means uh, now we are having that is uh, antivirus and we, sp uh, we spray so many things uh, um, uh, to get ourselves uh, clean, the uh, atmosphere clean also to start. But those days, that is um, uh, in the temple, that is, uh, the common people will come, it should be clean. You should not have is, is, uh, uh, any epidemic or also you should not have that is, uh, any germicide. So the Kajagabhyam, of course, we know very well it was used in the Shiva temples uh, for Abhishek to Shiva, the first Abhishek to Shiva. But here, there is an uh, interesting aspect is uh, he, 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 is, he was sprinkling Kajagabhyam. That is just uh, it was, it was a germicide so that the people um, will be safe, they will not have any epidemics. So now there is similar uh, the panasalas existed, but this was the, uh, one of the biggest panasalas. There we have some circles uh, start here and there. So they are in Bahu temple, uh, what is scriptures near Pondicherry, and Thiruvada is Thiruvadurai, Thirumukkudal, of course, it was later on in uh, medical universities, uh, Thiruvutyos, and uh, Thirubumanai. These are some of the places uh, uh, which was having this. Of course, uh, and here's um, one uh, interesting request. Uh, this was taken over by ASI. Of course, and, uh, we got it. Um, uh, um, ability is conserved, ASI. You can see the difference. It's temple. That's a view of the temple. It's full of inscriptions. You can see. This looked like this. It was made like this. Of course, the interesting aspect was the architecture also. I didn't go to that aspect. But it is also having a uh, just like any other temple, it will, it will have uh, uh, the mood in the night, uh, three tires. Of course, uh, further investigations um, also shows um, uh, there was a uh, passage in the inscriptions about Nadimil's Tirumuttam Raja Raja Chaturvedi Mangala. So the main activities were there in the Nadimil Tirumuttam. Tirumuttam means maybe uh, the central part of the city had the main activities. So there is not really also felt it. So there should be some other place also, not only the temple there, which was uh, hosting or which was having an uh, uh, authority to control the uh, property. Maybe some so companies, maybe some other uh, location nearby for Sale. So we made a search, for of course, uh, on this um, uh, request. But of course, it's on this order, we say. Of course, this was uh, another temple nearby, not far away. That's, of course, within the uh, district. This, uh, Pavalaisura temple, of course, um, um, near that we got a great mandapa. It was not anything to do with the main temple. This is the um, uh, Patasala, of course, well sealed, uh, and what, uh, that's a uh, stone uh, edifice. Next one. You can see this um, the remains of the sala, because what we have seen is uh, only one part. This is the, the entrance where the uh, students uh, will have a prayer, where they can sit and chant. You can see this um, central courtyard where they used to have this. This was uh, discovered and excavated and, and also conserved. You can see the open courtyard. This was that um, uh, part of maybe. Of course, we don't get any inscriptions there because the other inscription speaks about this Chadurvedi Mangalam, Nadivin, Nadivotra. Maybe Chadurvedi, maybe the uh, main part of the which was there. This, uh, this was a new discovery by which you can find uh, the parts of the next one. 
But now, that is, um, uh, he was equally introspective and understand about this um, uh, Panasala's early period. Even he was um, uh, knowing those things, he asked us to verify from this, uh, one of the earliest uh, such salai, that is, uh, frequently we come across about this um, uh, Kandalur salai, because the Jolas generally, that is, uh, they are very proud of, that is, uh, putting down this uh, Kandalur salai. The Sala here was a only Vedic uh, university. How it became, there is uh, 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 any other of that. So, of course, um, the Sala was preferred by him, and also any other inscriptions was published by the Kurangur art like the series. The Oboso plates uh, inscriptions, which mentions such a quote of that account. Of course, um, he was the king, that is, uh, the high uh, king of the Datable to 855, the inscriptions of Datable to 855. Interestingly, this inscription gives the date of the inscription or the uh, and Kaliuga day. Of course, uh, recently there is a publication um, on uh, Kaliuga, Kaliuga days and how you can fix the Kaliuga one by Dr. Rajan has published a book and he has collected this. When this inscription was published, there were only four or five inscriptions were known in which it is actually they have referred about this Kaliuga day. But when you go uh, back, that is, there were about 400, more than 400 inscriptions he has collect, collected throughout the, um, uh, India and he has given the date for the Kaliva. Of course, I am not going into that detail because it is a book that is a subject itself. So, the, this inscription, of course, um, Kaliva day was given, which was um, at that time considered as 855. It may be the same. I don't know, I have not calculated it um, with the new calculations of Dr. Rajat. But, anyways, it's 855 uh, common era. It's, um, it mentions about the purchase lands in the Sabah of this uh, Minchere. Minchere is the village, even now it is there. And constructed a temple. You must, interest, uh, you must know, as I told you, the purchase the land and um, uh, constructed the temple. Of course, not uh, like um, usurp the land, as some people uh, feel, or some people this generally that is um, ridiculous and broadcast. That is uh, the king's. Uh, we separate from the um, lawyer caste or lawyer uh, people or uh, downtrodden and given to the temple. It's not like that. They purchase it. That's a matter of the, what we are doing is uh, acquisition. They did it and so, um, uh, constructed a temple of Vishnu. They did uh, Parthiva Sagara and Parthiva Sagara Param, the village was also there. And they established this Salai of 95 Satas. There are also, there is, um, is, uh, there is a uh, View, of course, in the Tamil name is, is he's mentioning is Habir uh, Charanam, maybe it's um, Habir Char, maybe um, a part of the, um, of course, uh, Professor Dash told me it may be um, uh, what he calls um, uh, Rigveda, there is a part of Rigveda, which was very popular in, in, in that part of the country earlier. Also, Habir Charanam is mentioned in the inscriptions, and so with Aitriya and Talavatara, they were all um, continued. But this Pavilion Charanam, we don't know what is that now. Of course, this was the temple, says, uh, um, in which the inscriptions uh, ascribed. Uh, of course, uh, it was a copper plate inscription found in a Gozo uh, office. Of course, um, this was published in the Triangle of Atlas uh, Series 1 in 1. First inscription itself was this inscription because it was very interesting. This is the temple now. Of course, it is also a protected monument. Because of the inscriptions and also its antiquity, which is about uh, 1200 years old. That is, it is uh, preserved as a monument in Kanyagumari district. Next one. Of course, the model of the, it is many, it mentions uh, about this uh, applications uh, for admission should be knowledge of Yakarana, Mimamsa, and Purohita. So it is maybe an advanced study center where they have this uh, Yakarana was not taught, but the people who are joining should, have, should know Yakarana. Of course, it mentions about this political will uh, and political science, mm -hmm. learning necessary to conduct the affairs of the three kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Learning means it may be a political science. Of course, other faculties of uh, which we are fearing the Kandalur Salai had is, may not, would not have existed here. But it was a Salai, maybe it's a, a contemporary to Kandalur Salai because uh, uh, the inscription mentions uh, it, was, um, uh, it was a model of Kandalur Salai, may not be full Salai. So the, again, so the question came, whether um, uh, Kandaru Salai, which was destroyed by these um, uh, Chola kings, uh, they're all of the uh, same type or different type. So the, 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 so far, you could not get any inscription evidences 
and uh, Kadrachala directly about its uh, um, constitution and also its uh, uh, subjects taught there and other things. So Kadrachala is, why Cholas attack this? Of course, um, uh, the question always comes. Why Cholas attack uh, the attack this? Uh, because it, if it is a Vedic university, they should not have done it. So such a price, you know, Rajendra Raja, Raja, Raja has done so much for the Vedic studies, and also the Sanskrit studies, and also language studies, and also so far the divine body and everything has started doing it. How he destroyed this Salais, uh, uh, then uh, uh, we were bound. Of course, Krishna was uh, uh, Dr. Krishna, Krishna, that is uh, superintending epigraphist at that time. Then he later he became the chief epigraphist. He was asked to explore. Then he found a work which can send, of course, uh, always um, uh, the literature and uh, uh, epigraphy should go together. Then they, they, they will give a clue for each other. So then uh, um, uh, he went and searched and he got a work. Of course, it was nothing earlier published. It was found in uh, Baroda, Kuleyamala uh, uh, of 8th century CE. It was uh, earlier work than this um, temple, which is 855 or even later than that. But Kuleyamala is the work that they let a treat. It's a pocket sambu of Vidyotra uh, uh, Suri. Vidyotra Suri was uh, um, <coughs> maybe uh, all the people came. It is um, some people came to join us and Buddha. But it is um, just like our uh, Kadambari. It is a story. It's um, uh, what you call um, a novel. It's, uh, the heroes Kuleyachandra visited Vijayapuri on the southern coast in search of Kuleyamala. Is the heroine that is just like Kalamari story, more or less the, the same story. And we see that a madam, this is a madam that is very good. Ah, this is um, the madam, uh, which is um, the, the chatters, the students from various countries um, were studying there, such as Nata, Tarnata, Malva, Anuja, Ulla, Maratha, Dhaka, uh, Sri Kanta. And um, with, um, Sahindava. So many and, and countries are mentioned in the, in the, in the literature. They all um, were there. So he mentions all these uh, things that the people are there. They were learning some practicing archery. And this is the thing which is very interesting. They were learning as a practicing archery, fighting with the sword and shield. These things are, even though Vedic Vedas were taught there, the arts, science like um, uh, Nimitta uh, Saguna. That is uh, Samuna Sastra, Mantra, Yoga, and so many things, uh, Dadavada, uh, Jyodisha, Sopna Sastra, so many things were uh, taught there. Teaching of uh, different Sastras like Vyagrana, and all were also there. Of course, recitation of Vedas, he mentions, and they were all only fed. They were not and, uh, people from uh, who were regular, regularly there. They were all only fed. So, so the conversations with colloquial words are mentioned there. So that is uh, that was very interesting uh, work, Kuleyamala. So probably is that this of the of course uh, Mr. Shah who discovered this uh, who has edited this work, he is um, arrived at this um, uh, conclusion. So, like is that this area where uh, Vijayapuri is on the southern coast of India was situated must be this um, uh, in Kerala. Of course, um, uh, uh, the basis of the descriptions of the country. As, um, as well as, as full of trees of uh, cardamom, sandalwood, there's a uh, palasin, and also coconut trees, uh, and uh, boogie pala, of course, uh, uh, arcanic. So, why in the world is this uh, modern indicates this, that the establishment described should be situated in the countries where this word was involved? You also mentioned the compares in the, in the longer article about this madam. The madam was in, in the work in, in Kerala. I mean, the southern part of the country. So it will be presently uh, explained on the basis of the contemporary epigraphical references and both point to the location of the establishment in Kerala. He concludes, he is not coming to us, uh, um, uh, this, our, our uh, Andalus Sala, but yes, that, that's the that second of Madai existed only in, um, only in Kerala. Maybe this, uh, this should be the um, uh, Mada, means the Sala, which, is, uh, which was destroyed by the um, uh, Chola kings. It's because uh, there was more, so much many people to come from uh, uh, neighboring countries. They were learning archeries and etc. Of course, this uh, this coming in many uh, historic books later. 
but it is uh, yeah, the, the discovery was made uh, um, through the history or through the inscriptions or through the what you call it. Of course, now recently um, yeah, I learned that is um, yeah, the Valiya Sala in uh, Trivandrum. Of course, uh, it was always uh, doubted. Even Sarkar just written in an article uh, that is uh, Valiya Sala, maybe the Kandalur Sala. But recently, there is um, yeah, about, uh, um, about three years back, they found an inscription that is in. Um, in Valiya Sala itself, which it mentions of an inscription letter. Of course, it mentions um, the place of um, uh, Kandalu. Maybe this uh, Valiya Sala area should maybe the uh, Kandalu Sala. Of course, this inscription was in uh, Malayali of, uh, of the 17th and 18th century. This was published by the state uh, government in 1970. So maybe the, uh, we have come to the conclusion that um, uh, Kandalu Sala was there in Java, uh, maybe the Vali uh, Sale. Of course, you go for more uh, and, uh, discoveries. Uh, I don't know. I haven't got the full report. Of course, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was only mentioned in some of the um, uh, conferences. Maybe there's Vali Sale, maybe the, um, uh, what you call the Kandru Sale, maybe the Vali Sale of uh, Toronto. Of course, now we're coming to say, uh, I'll quickly go through it. Time is um, out. So I'll, I'll quickly go through about the language. Um, of the inscriptions. The language of the inscriptions are, are very important because um, uh, they contain that is um, so much about the, uh, not only the king's history, they contain about the language that is uh, what is uh, um, whatever you call uh, theologies or phonetics or anything else, the development of the politics, everything you can decide. Of course, even now we know that is whether uh, um, uh, uh, Tamil, Tamil or Tamil Brahmi. Uh, scripts of the alien or uh, the second branches because depending upon the script only, it are all recorded. It's uh, that is very well that is uh, um, uh, uh, engraved. Of course, Sanskrit Tamil inscriptions anything they have implied meaning always. That is, uh, each and every word has got something to tell you from the particular period. Of course, uh, that should be taken as a separate subject because uh, we have got uh, many inscriptions uh, both in Sanskrit and Tamil. If you go the recent uh, discovery of the Tirvindal or copper plates, it is running at the um, uh, earlier part. So, um, uh, Sanskrit, of course, most of the solar inscriptions uh, will have the, that is, uh, the introductory, introductory part that is where uh, it uh, tells about the victory of the kings, it will be a Sanskrit part, and later part it will be uh, uh, the, it's more for, of course, this is Tirvindal. It's one of the biggest discoveries in the world. In the world uh, so far, made it's 85 copper plates that is in the same place that is in Tirvindalo. So, the, we have got uh, so many things to learn from this. Of course, totally 86 plates, Sanskrit, is eight plates and 17 pages. Of course, uh, and, uh, so if you see the copper plate, you'll wonder how they make the copies in both the um, plates without affecting the uh, that is, uh, um, uh, other plate. Generally, there is um, there is um, uh, political achievements in the Sanskrit part, as I told in later part. For school of Tunga now, um, the important aspect is, we'll come to the next part. Of course, um, yeah, bilingual inscriptions are very important. Of course, uh, what I said about the Chola inscriptions earlier, they were all uh, not bilingual, even though two languages are used. Earlier languages was Sanskrit for the Prasasti and later for, uh, for the grants. Because the grants should be understood by the local people. So that was written in the local language. But in some, there are some uh, cases, rare cases, where the same uh, the Sanskrit words should be given, and there is um, uh, uh, its translation will be given in um, Tamil or so. Again, the same. Uh, in, there is one such inscription in uh, in Chidambaram, that is in Sivagami Kamakotam in Chidambaram. Of course, uh, it is having uh, Naraloke Viras, that is who constructed these Prakaras and hundred pillared halls. Of course. Um, only one slog I will read it and uh, because I don't want to take much of the time. Of course, this um, Sanskrit portion is in um, what you call it in uh, Sanskrit portion is in what uh, in uh, in Gunda script and um, uh, Tamil is also Tamil uh, script. Of course, um, uh, it's a very interesting aspect. And sometimes uh, when they develop uh, the Sanskrit portion to Tamil, they make some improvement. When they take the Tamil portion to the Sanskrit also, well, simultaneously done more or less. So that is um, uh, that we, of course, uh, after the Sanskrit portion is over, they started engraving the, the Tamil portions. So that is uh, they, they made improvements on the uh, 
clarified some other things. So you know the song then Chidam Saganda Mamnam Kudde Samam Tasmin Gauri Padhi Divi Sadoho Vishabiva Mayaha Buddha Pradaha King Karodu Sabana Dehi Akim Bhakti Prapan Chalago Babadi Prasadaha. This is the, the Sanskrit portion which says, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the, the city is very, the comparison is very, the devas gave only that is uh, what he calls is, uh, that is poison to Shiva. But on the contrary, this uh, the king, that is uh, Pratula one, that is according to this knowledge Veda, he gave this uh, milk, that is uh, with uh, sweet milk, that is with uh, a second maybe it's uh, Karkand, the Karkand part, he gave to this. Uh, God. So how he said uh, uh, more important than the devas, and also how the bhakti made him to get a position higher than that. Of course, I'm not going. I'm, okay. Of course, similarly, he says it refers about the um, um, uh, people, presence of the um, people like Bhattacharya, and says, um, uh, yeah, some people from uh, um, uh, what he called from uh, Eastern India, mostly that is. Um, from Bengal came and some uh, gathered over uh, the people for uh, Devi worship, especially when Bhattacharya came and when Ganguly came. These are all inscriptions. Of course, these inscriptions were published by his, uh, Dr. R. Narasan in some of the journals. That's So I'm not going to tell me terminology. And of course, uh, how it helps, how it helps, uh, there is uh, to identify some of the some of the sculptures. The sculptures are all. Uh, uh, dated according to time, but there are some sculptures. This is a Dwarapalaka, where there's inscriptions about the uh, Cholikin style. So we, 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 we directly said Cholikin uh, thing was brought, Cholikin uh, is a what trophy by the king, Raja Raja Raja. I'm not going to this. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, the Bhattarikas, then, uh, of course, we don't get a direct name for the Kali. But it is mentioned in the Sanskrit inscriptions of Bhattarika, maybe the name. Of course, these inscriptions of the um, Northern Goa, Western Gopra of Chidambaraka is not as full text of the Bharatanatya, that is extra. All the shlokas are there. Look up the sculptures. Of course, these are the, some of the sculptures also, only inscriptions help us. This is a three faced deity. Of course, uh, people were very much. Uh, even Gopinathar uh, um, was very confused whether it is uh, Brahma or how to uh, name it because attributes are not seen. Because um, there is um, three faces sculptures, uh, figures will have some other uh, Brahma, it's Brahma, it will have a uh, Karada Mukhada or he will have only as uh, Gada Mukhada in some cases or Kirita Mukhada. But here the Mukhada is also changed. Let's try. Let's try see. You can see, it's, but it is written, it's only a Gada Mukhada. Written as he described there, say Adi Tanteswara. That is, uh, you know, uh, Tantikeswara, Tanteswara came to Shiva temple. So after the Tanteswara became an iron mark, maybe about uh, after 600, 700 years, he led Pallava time and Pallava um, started. And uh, of course, um, the um, uh, Cholas um, rather uh, appreciated it and made it uh, possible in all the temples. So, but what is this? Uh, you see the three face of the Vishnu, the three face of the four face of Shiva, the attributes were there. So, this is the known as Adi Chanteswara. Of course, um, Chanteswara, uh, before the introduction of Chanteswara, he, he, he was the Nirmalya Murti. This was the Nirmalya Murti. Of course, uh, this is following in Chidambaram, even now. In, in Chanteswara, he, he will be kept. He, they name him as Bhumma Chanteswara because he is having uh, uh, three faces. But it is only it's named as Adi Chanteswara. So because before the introduction of um, um, Chandigeshwara in the Shiva temples, uh, the, this um, uh, iconography, this figure was uh, he was there as a Yumanya Murti. This is a great problem which was in iconography. This has been solved. So we have got so many things. I'm not going to this uh, loss of time. But how it uh, um, uh, can solve this uh, cult problem also, we will help it in some other occasion. So now I'm very it's a great uh, it has been covered in a separate lecture which I gave in uh, that is uh, in in, West, uh, in Bengal the government that is uh, last year uh, during a conference about this um, uh, 
contribution of the uh, Bengal Brahmins to South India. This came, of course, uh, digital format and telling not to miss this one. Yes. Yes. So I come, I'm very much thankful. I don't know whether <coughs> the lecture was useful. Of course, uh, uh, open jingle. We'll, we'll cover this topic somewhere in later. And go to the acknowledgement. Really, really, I say I am very thankful to this um, uh, Dr. Kamesh Sri, the senior sons, and Bhavas Parmanyam, and the Yamna Devi, all of the things. The scholars were giving me this opportunity. I don't know. I took about one hour. I don't know if this was useful to you or not. But I wanted to share uh, some of the experiences with Raghav Riva. So, the methodology he taught. Of course, how the inscription should not be left by simply publishing it, we have to go through it thoroughly. That is, and also to see every aspect there is uh, um, uh, analyzed uh, there is, uh, fully, so that we will know the full history and also the, the culture and heritage of our uh, country, especially this uh, southern country could be brought back. Of course, my heartfelt appreciation for the research uh, was done by uh, Ramadini. She was helpful me to interpret some of the inscriptions. Uh, and so, um, uh, of course, C. Raman, the super nigger, can be spotless, he can be playing with the photographs, and it's really no one does substitute something also. Of course, to my uh, grandson, Sir Ritin Malaji, for helping me in these presentations. Of course, that's amazing. So, thank you all for your uh, presence. Of course, uh, I don't know whether I could use this to to uh, Sundaram's. Um, uh, and Calibar, because uh, 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 that was a great uh, epigraphist, uh, which I read first, and after, so, which I learned so much from him. So, so uh, there is a thing, so um, I don't know whether I did justification uh, things uh, yeah. for him. But in this, uh, I uh, hope that is, uh, um, we can learn at least a few points from this. So, thank you all. Once again, thank them. And in case of our uh, this is this good opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Yes, Dr. Kameshwari, you can take over. Professor, this uh, is exposition of the topic, which is not much known to us. Very interesting and very, very informative. I have one uh, question uh, to ask you. Is there any study on the, um, the, uh, the assistance given by the government for studies? The assistance given by the kings for studies, which you saw in the... Hello? Am I audible? hearing. Yeah, yes. please start. Repeat the question. Ah, is there any study on the various types of assistance given by the governments? Something else is crossing. No, no, no. Assistance for the... Uh, uh, for studies. Uh, which you uh, show, uh, Ayurveda and other things. And all those things. You showed from Rajaraja's uh, uh, reign. But is there a continuous stream of uh, uh, assistance okay. given? By the different uh, yes. dynasties, different things. Has there been any study on a particular place, like you did I on Brahmins of Bengal? It's a good question. But uh, when the Cholas were there, of course, Mahabharata uh, uh, said once uh, that hmm. is uh, um, the Cholas established great institutions like this yes. because uh, the, they were they were guilty of um, putting down. Um, uh, no. Kandarur Salai, mm -hmm. uh, it was having a Vedic education also, and uh, Sanskrit education also, and languages also taught that. Probably for that was the reason why they started uh, the, many such uh, institutions uh, that is within their kingdom, that is wherever possible, wherever uh, the people are interested, students should come there. That was one of the reasons. So the, 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 it was there. But what happened when the Vidyanagara came, they, uh, they, they, did, uh, they, they did close it. Automatically, the, 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 the number of students reduced. 
that is um, uh, from 45 to 25 time. So it, it, they all went to the individual temples, individual temples. Mm -hmm. um, so particular sarcastic they went to the temples. So for that they made some grants. There is mm -hmm. made some grants. But um, mm -hmm. afterwards uh, it completely is, um, uh, because of the uh, fall of this um, uh, land reforms. It's, okay. Uh, completely it's gone. It's gone. I see. Okay. Because in Tiruvatri, your uh, inscription also I saw that there was an uh, uh, endowment made for studies. Yeah. And in all the temples, you do have places for study and other things. Temples, of course, it is there. But these patasalas, this is something really different from, uh, past, uh, from, from classes being taken in the temple premises. So I just want to know whether there is any study on it. Exactly. Somebody yeah, has somebody done any study. Actually, you know, there is, um, uh, the Cholas were a uh, really great pattern of arts. Eh? They wanted to develop an education side also. So as I mm. told you, there is, uh, the, the, which were specialized outside. They mm. brought those pictures and uh, made those things. Mm. That is the reason one uh, Matacharya and the scripture which I mentioned uh, has come there. Mm. But also, that is, uh, some people asked me that whenever I do lecture, why the, uh, they gave uh, um, yeah, there is more importance to the Sanskrit. Why not to Tamil? This is a question. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, they put it to me. But uh, the, um, uh, to this question, the answer is: if you go, you need not go far away. You see this Yentharitram um, uh, uh, by what you call Uyya uh, Samana uh, He has written uh, mm -hmm. how the people in each and every village learn Tamil. That is uh, mm -hmm. very low level. In the rest of the screen, they were made. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many Pandikudams were there. And the great scholars in Tamil were all uh, not uh, college students or UC students. They were all, uh, they don't have a uh, formal degree. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. So they, they came out. So Tamil was uh, the local language in the very local level. It developed itself. But uh, mm -hmm. the Sanskrit being um, and the Vedic studies being uh, dwindling, the king wanted to, that is, uh, Wherever the weaker section is there, they wanted to support. That is the reason why they wanted mm -hmm. to re establish and give uh, some type of thing. As I told you, it is not the entire village, it is a purchase and give. And also, yes. they, they gave only 1% or 2% of the land tax free. That is why the 99% were enjoyed uh, by others. Yes, yes. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for a fine lecture. Dr. Sundaram would have enjoyed it. He was, uh, he had written articles on literary beauty of uh, inscriptions. Even in our own journal, he has done it. So he would have definitely enjoyed it and he would have, probably he would add to what you have said. Very valuable in many fields of uh, specialities. So uh, I think he would be really be happy today hearing to your lecture. And uh, we are also indeed very happy, sir, to have had this lecture. And it is really eye-opening. I have got some pure few topics which can be taken by younger uh, scholars to develop and uh, made into a big uh, research work also. People can take it up. Like I told you about this education, how it had uh, uh, continued with the dynasties and uh, chieftains. When the Telugus came, whether it continued. When the, Naya, when the Marathis came, whether it continued or not, we have to study. So that could be done also by somebody. So I am very thankful to you, sir, for this fine lecture. And I, is there any other question? Is there time? 7.15? 7 7.20. 7 but yeah. uh, let us request uh, Professor Murthy to write an article on this in our, yes, uh, for our journal. In our journal, yes. In our so, journal, it will be I, a scientific uh, question. To write because, you know, it's a... Um, uh, Sanskrit um, uh, is a language in inscriptions. Uh, of course, there are some people who have done work, but in Tamil Nadu, nobody has done that type of uh, work. It is, uh, yes. it comes very Chola inscriptions got Sanskrit portion. Yes. Of course, I told you this, uh, uh, this inscriptions in Pudambara, that is bilingual inscriptions. Uh, that is a Sanskrit portion in Tamil inscriptions. Uh, how this uh, difference, the PhD subject is that. So much of materials there when the 36 shlokas with so many commentaries, so that uh, they can take it up like that. Yes, they can do so. I, I will certainly do, I will give an article to you. A special volume on the 75th year of the institute, 
that Thank actually you. we are running 75 kilos yeah. now under covid so we will have to celebrate it later then we will be bringing out a special volume for that so we will, we would like to like you to give us a, an article on that and dr sundar has made a section of scriptures in tamil nadu in his uh, contribution of tamil nadu to sanskrit literature one portion is on tamil nadu inscriptions sanskrit inscriptions so i think uh, you can, your paper would be really valuable to our journal and a Sure. we will go we will we will actually we wanted to make an endo make a seminar on art and architecture i think we have told you about that yeah, yeah. so in the when, when that happens you will be in the center hall of the institution and you will be giving a lecture again so you, your uh, your wish yeah. to lecture in the center hall will become fructified so we'll meet you again sir sure, shortly sure, sure. and uh, i wish i thank the endowment makers of this thank dr sundara endowment he had been one of us he had been guiding us uh, without knowing that he had guided us we have learnt a lot from him for instance i always say there was one sentence when uh, dr janaki was editing a jaina text the text said bharatam chapa sadrasya so I, i was asked to sit by her and listen the student was also there she said we were we were just wondering whether it is right or wrong she said you are not to touch the text go and ask sundaram he will know because he is a specialist in jaina jaina text so i went to him and i asked he gave a beautiful explanation from if you lay the bow from gujarat to assam you lay the bow and then extend it by its uh, non to the south kanyakumari and the bow end other arm end will go to the upper, upper side kashmir so bharatam chapa sadrasyam was their geographical description of india So that was wonderful description. It's a small thing which are very very valuable, which are really specific, which others may not know. So we miss him a lot. We would have we have benefited a lot by his association, and uh, I I I really feel that today he would be really happy hearing to this. Of course, this is aerial, so definitely he'll be <laughs> he'll be hearing. I thank uh, Mrs. Saraswati Sundaram. for me having made this endowment and the family members so i thank everybody who had attended today today's lecture and we will meet again for another lecture shortly in two weeks time the date is yet to be fixed we will come back again on air thank you sir thank you thank, thank you very you. much yes sir october 3rd dr gopal venu gopal hope yes. he is giving a lecture on the life and works of sadashiva brahmendra yes Thank you. Thank you. Can we close? Close, Padilla, ma. Mama, pa. Right.